in Mintan. I hope you watch this video as it contains two parts. The first half will deal with what I meant about changing your mind. The second half will entail something I wish to debate with you about. I hope you listen as to what I have to say as it would mean a lot to me. Normally, someone will change their mind or outlook or opinion or attitude on a concept or viewpoint usually when the person either learns more of the opposing view or begin to understand the counterpoint much clearer. Were you obligated to change your mind? No. However, considering that I am an on-off fan of yours or a psychophonic troll as you claim, I was not aware of your attitudes today compared to what they were years ago. Perhaps I should ask you these questions in Mendan. Are you more or less of an atheist than you were five years ago? Are you more or less into the development of virtual reality as you once talked about it in the past? And lastly, are you more into antinatalism or have you become less of a supporter of antinatalism? I really wish to know where you stand on them today as opposed to where you were five years ago. Now, if I were to debate you about anything, it would not be about atheism or antinatalism or how bad Donald Trump would be as president. Rather, I would love to talk about something you once discussed in your videos. Virtual reality. Do not get me wrong. Virtual reality was one of your most unusual arguments on YouTube. In fact, it was one of my favorite attributes of you. As a fan of Star Trek, there was something called the holodeck. In case you are not familiar, the holodeck enabled the characters to engage in a holographic world of their own choosing, be it combat training, a nightclub, or to reenact a crime scene. As someone who aspires to see such technology arise one day, I also see problems with this virtual reality world you speak of in Mendham. While the concept of a virtual world does sound plausible in the future considering the technology we have regarding Oculus Rift, there are also problems with the idea of a virtual world. For example, let us say someone takes repeated trips into this virtual world. So much, in fact, the hypothetical person in question develops an addiction. What is to stop such a person from falling into this trap? Consider this for a second in Mendham. There have been reports of people playing video games and computer games to the point where it becomes their entire life. In the news, there have been stories about people in South Korea, for example, who have died in video game cafes because these gamers never once did anything to pull themselves from their computer consoles. Their entire life eventually became the very game they were playing, and these people died in the middle of playing their games because they became very obsessed. How does this relate to a hypothetical virtual world you speak of? Let us look at the facts. Food is something people are going to need to sustain their lives and their health. In a virtual world, the food would not provide any substance to the occupants, for lack of a better term, because the food in the virtual world would not be real. Therefore, someone in the virtual world would starve to death because they are not obtaining the proper nutrients for their body and their health. Another issue that could arise is the lack of social interaction with real living people. In many ways, the interaction with virtual people in the virtual world would not even suffice to a real human being. If one could control the attributes, attitudes, personalities, and opinions of the people in their virtual scenario, such interactions would become boring. Also, nothing can replace social interaction with real living beings who have their own observations and their own thoughts on reality. That is what allows human interaction in the real world to be more interesting. Knowing that not everyone is going to like you or agree with you is what makes life interesting because the random probability of people liking you or not liking you. Now this also goes into a third point I wish to make. There is also the issue of someone becoming obsessed with a fantasy of a hypothetical person might hold regarding someone envisioned in this virtual reality world. Let us say there's some shy nerd who likes a guy or girl. It doesn't matter the gender or the orientation or the sex of the shy nerd in question. And to help unleash their fantasy of being with said guy or girl of their dreams, 
The hypothetical person in question lives it out in the virtual world. The problem that then arises is what prevents this hypothetical shy nerd from turning their fantasy into a dark reality. There has to be limits to prevent such things from happening, don't you agree? I would love to hear your answers or rebuttals or refutations to my arguments. I await your reply.